Welcome to Modern Playbook. Uh, this is our round table. Uh, I guess I'll be hosting today. And we're going to start off with Nico's game of which book would you rather buy? So <laughs> we'll start at the bottom. I like that you and... trademarked the game. Like It was just my bad idea. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Great Thank idea. You. Yeah, so we'll start at the bottom and then work our way up. Um, I picked two books of or Spider Woman number nine, the one in twenty five, and then the Taskmaster number three, the one in twenty five variant. Hmm. Ooh. All right, I'll start on this one. This is this is a good good pick. I, I'd say I'm gonna go with Spider Woman number nine on this. And here's my rationale is I think you know, this artist, Rose Besh, she's gonna start to get really, really big. And these books will get hot. I love Taskmaster 3. There's some uh, first appearances in that book. Um, a cool cover in its own right. Um, but I'm going to go with the Spider-Woman. Let, let me let me uh, add to that. So both great covers. It's crazy how high or how much uh, equity is gained walking into this thing. Um, if you got it, pre-ordered these books or got them for, you know, ratio. But my pick by far, not even close, is Taskmaster 3, the Shane Davis 1 in 25 incentive variant. I was very early on this book. I ordered it pre-FOC. I put it on my FOC list on my subreddit. Um, you can find that under um, a subreddit, New Comic Book Day Spec. But anyways, mm -hmm. book before the cover, uh, we have a first appearance, and it looks like a first appearance that could make some noise and have legs. I believe if I'm mispronouncing this, please forgive me. I, I, I read it as Tyguk or Tyjuk. And um, he's basically, uh, I guess you could say, kind of like uh, Century Superman and Captain America all wrapped in one from South Korea. He dons the South Korean flag on his chest. On top of that, you know, White Fox makes a really nice appearance along with Black Widow. And Taskmaster, Tony Master, ta uh, Taskmaster, he's hilarious in this in this this run, but especially in this book, he, it's almost he almost breaks the fourth wall, but he doesn't. And he's just uh, he's just he, I don't know he just makes me laugh. And on top of that, this book is going to be really under ordered. I would expect orders to probably be under thirty, more closer to twenty thousand. And then you have the one in twenty five on top of that. I like Taskmaster three one. Hmm. Okay, this is a case of uh, who do you prefer, Kirk or Picard? <laughs> and uh, some people will say, well, I prefer the original series, but I like Picard more. So I like the cover of Spider-Woman number nine. I love it. Um, and it's a good chance. Now, I, sh I had shown off the Taskmaster number three in uh, one of my previous videos one of my previous haul videos. And it's a real, 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 real good chance that I'll be showing off uh, number nine. It's a real good chance. Make no make no promises. But uh, I love the cover to number nine, but I prefer the insides of Taskmaster number three. Which book did you fucking pick? <laughs> he was very honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, okay. I, okay, now if I had neither and I had a uh, scratch to spend, I'm gonna spend that money on Taskmaster number three. Three All, teeth. Yeah, yes, exactly. So th this is easy for me, and I, I think I've been pretty vocal about it. Um, <laughs> I, I do not like, I, and I understand art is in the, the eyes of the beholder. But I'm just not a fan of the Spider Woman number nine, and you know my perception of the market is is just that the Spider Woman is just not a popular character. I mean, they try to give her a series every now and then. I've actually read the original first series run. It, you know, it was it wasn't easy. <laughs> um, it, it it seems like uh, I don't know. She's just been uh, I don't know, kind of cursed from the start. I'm sure. I'm offending some Spider Woman, Jessica Drew fan out um, there. But uh, let me talk about the positive. Um, uh, I am a Shane Davis fan. I think he's a vastly underrated artist. Uh, I'm trying to think some of the covers he's done. I want to say he did uh, Shadow Man 13 
Okay. Um, I believe it's a one in fifty, either a one in fifty or a one in forty variant. He's uh, done a lot of DC covers yeah. that I know I've been impressed by. I just, mm -hmm. I want to say maybe Red Red Hood, but that may be Billy Tucci. Not not sure, no. but anyway. Shane Davis is immensely talented, immensely underrated. Every time I see a, co a cover of his, I, I like it. And you know, you know, hey, you get a great cover, and you get a con you know a content uh, plus up with the the first appearance that Rich talked about. So yeah, it's it's a pretty clear decision for me. So Jessup, what are your your thoughts? Right off the cuff. I'm going to seek out buying the Spider-Woman 9. At first, when I saw the cover, I'm like, nah, I don't like it. But the more I look at it, like when you sit and look at a piece of art, you know, you see people just sitting there and looking at it. The longer I look at it, the more I like it. And I don't think I knew what was going on exactly when I first saw it. But now I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to pay the money. I'm going to go, because I'm not going to find this at a half price books. I'm not going to find this in a back issue bin. But I am scared that it's going to keep climbing, especially with that silk. Uh, issue two that's coming out. Is this, does anybody know off chance, is this Besh's first cover? Because if it is, then I'm definitely going to get it. But yeah, I mean, what Carter said, uh, the, the guts of Taskmaster 3 is going to have spec value over the long term as opposed to a pure cover buy with Spider Woman 9. Because I don't think there's anything going on in that book, at least not that I've heard. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. Uh, Right off the get, I, I'm going to chase Spider Woman Nine. I at least want one copy for my PC. Taskmaster Three, although I love Taskmaster, it, it's spec on the the first appearance, and uh, I'll I'll let that play out. I think it'll I think it'll maybe dip down a little bit, and might be a chance to grab it later on. I, I see the Spider Woman Nine keep climbing, personally. So Spider Woman uh, Nine, final answer. Yeah. <laughs> I like uh, Spider Woman Nine. Um, I, I had, for whatever reason, just don't have a lot of faith in uh, a lot of the uh, Gen Z, uh, like Asian Marvel New Agents of Atlas 2.0 kind of characters that they've been rolling out. Uh, for whatever reason, I, I just don't. Um, Shang-Chi, different story. Silk, different story. Amadeus Cho, different story. This guy, we'll see how it goes. I think even if he's here to stay, it'll, this book will come down. Uh, it's not like he's going to be a fixture in uh, Marvel Comics over the course of the next 18 months. People will forget about it. The book will come down, and I'll get a show, or it'll disappear forever, and I'll never fucking own a copy. But uh, hopefully it'll come down, and I can score one. The Spider Woman, I don't know. Uh, stuff like this where it's like those heartfelt cover buys, they tend to disappear forever. Mm. Um, it, at least that's been my experience. I liked the Spider Woman when it first came out. Maybe part of this is uh, me kicking myself in the ass for not actually going out and buying a stack of copies when I could for cheap. But she has no good variants. Like, cool. not like... Like, uh, you got one? Uh, okay. Give me a good one. <laughs> okay. Give me a good Steve, one. Steve made a really good point about how um, the Spider Woman, like, she has how Spider Woman variants, they kind of dip. Um, if you guys remember a few months ago, there was a Spider Woman variant. I forget the number, but there was a Spider Woman variant that was Ooh. like, it was Person. like, yeah. It was like yeah. eighty something dollars right out of the gate, and I think it's dipped. And there's also from uh, however many years ago, there's a Scott Forbes variant for number three. I forget which series. Yeah, I I had a nine eight of that, and I think yeah. that's part of my part of my uh, burn about Spider Woman yeah, variants exactly. too. Exactly, because I I had a hell of a time getting rid of it at that cover is gorgeous. Board. Yeah, but people, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, I I can't explain. I I I actually thought that was, you know, maybe as good as uh, the prison, but mm -hmm. people just didn't want it. I mean, I I found I think I wound up dumping it for under two hundred, but I I thought it was going to go for a lot more. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that yeah, I, I, I think this is a play on the artist 
and less on the character for me. Oh, yeah. Right? No right? doubt. If Rose takes off, this book's going to be out of reach forever. If she you know, crashes and burns, then forget it. But I think this is more... Forget Spider-Woman in this argument. I think it's really more about the artist than, than the character. Yeah, but uh, Spider-Woman, Spider-Woman's got upside, right? I mean, I there's, agree. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of people who think... Um, What's her name? Uh, I'm going to call her uh, by the wrong name. 13 from House. You know what I'm talking about? It's just 13 from House. That she's going to direct a Spider-Woman film. Oh, Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, there was, a, there was a lot of people that were suggesting that. And, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Let me ask the panel this. Does it change anyone's opinion to know that the very next day, that Taskmaster number three that same copy sold for like 250 bucks the following day. Still doesn't I, change my mind, but I, I didn't okay. realize that. I know in the Spider Man 9 and in in what's happening in that one, I think I mentioned it in the Hangouts earlier in the week. Uh, it's an early appearance of um, uh, what's her name? Uh, one in Superior Spider Man and that becomes Superior Spider Man. Uh, Ophelia, is that her name? Or. I don't know what have you, but her daughter is in is her first appearance is in number nine. Her name is Oph I, I believe it's Ophelia Vermis, and yes. a lot of people are overseeing that. So this would be a, like her second appearance or a first full. I don't know how the market would, but yeah, that's what's going on in the guts. But yeah, that made me cringe over the uh, two fifty because I like the copies I have and I don't want to get rid of them. I want to sell them, but right now it's at two hundred fifty dollars. What you just said, it's making me think otherwise. Okay. Well, and it tells me there's a lot of people who have uh, a lot of faith in that character. Holy yeah. cow. Mm -hmm. All, right. Totally. All right. Moving on to the next book. So, no throw shit. Up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. I couldn't find the auction for the Ha Ha John Gallagher uh, Wanted Comics, but I saw a best offer for 100 and then uh, I think around the same time, the uh, Mirka Andolfo Horror Comics number one, mm -hmm. both homages to Chambers of Chills 19. Uh, let's go ahead and kick it off with Carter. Ooh, oh, we. Okay. This one, this one is tough because I like both of them. Um, I, I'm going to give the. Hold on, can I, can I ask you a question? Sure. Is it at this price point, or if you could pay the same amount for them, it's at this price point, right? Yes, it's at this price point. Okay, oh, sorry. Okay, well, okay. So if we're if we're talking at at the price point, then I'm going with horror comics. I really like this just because I don't think enough people know about it. I bet if uh, you know. If uh, because this was nominated in the uh, in the in the Spec Ten, and I just, I just think that not a lot of people know about it. Didn't make the list, right? And I'm, I'm really surprised by that. So I'm, I, man, for the price, I'm gonna go with uh, horror, with uh, horror comics number one. For the price, for the price. Now I actually like the cover of uh, number two uh, a little bit better, but for the price, I like horror comics. For me, um, hold on, Rich, did you read uh, Haha -ha number two? No, I just you were, mo you were most likely to have already read it. That's the only reason I had <laughs> but I, I have read I have read number one multiple times, figured out the end, how you know the bullet hits the guy in the head and he sees his family as balloon animals. Yeah, I got that part, but not number two. And thank you for telling me that. I will be reading it after. But for me, as looking at the market and then listening to my brothers in arms, so to speak, my teammates here. Um, I probably uh, go with the horror comics. I'm not familiar with the book. I'll be honest with you. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm familiar with Chamber of Chill 19, but uh, I'll probably go with the horror comics. Um, I'll let you know if I have a different opinion after I read all to, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, for me, no question. It's horror comics. A for the price and for the cover, which is not a knock on the haha -ha book, but mm -hmm. that horror comics. Uh, screams by me to me, so there's where my money's going. So, this is a, a tough one for me. Um, and I have to admit a bias because uh, I, I, I spent some time in a hangout with, with Drew from Wanted Comics. Um, I, I'm, I'm really 
I'm really torn here. I, I was trying to look up the print run for the Ha Ha because I have picked up some Antarctic Press books. They are very hard to find no matter what Antarctic <laughs> Press book you're, you're, you're trying to, to, to find. Um, and and there's, some, there's some gems in there, and sometimes they, they go for premiums like this one. So, wow, this is this is tough. Um, They're all tough. That's why this game is so dope. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna say ha ha number two because I'm e even though the Antarctic presses are hard to come by, I I, I did find the um, wanted comics. Ha ha number two. Uh, one, uh, their covers were limited to 500 for the trade dress and 400 for the virgin. Oh, wow. um, so that, and I would assume number two probably has a similar print run. And even though Antarctic Press, their print runs aren't very high, I'm thinking there's probably more of those out there. Um, so I'm going to say ha ha too, but just by a little uh, sliver, uh, okay. it, it, it inches it out. So horror comics, um, the America Andolfo cover is limited to 250. Ooh. Oh man. Mm. Oh, oh wow. God. <laughs> How can you do this to me, Aaron? <laughs> He's better at this game than I ever was. I uh, really like it. <laughs> all right. I'll, I'll, yeah, I guess, I mean, that forces me to flip my vote. I, I'll i go with the horror <laughs> comics. Final answer. Okay. Ooh. All right. So uh, the, the horror comics, let me ask this. Uh, that's not a variant, right? That's cover A? It's not that's a store variant? Both are store variants. Oh, they're both store variants. Okay. Boy, mm, I, I like the cover of a ha ha better, but I'm not I'm not paying fifty six dollars for a nine four. Uh, I've seen better pictures, but I'd probably go with the horror comics. You don't see a lot of Antarctic, Antarctic press out there um, ever. Rarely in back issue bins. Um, you're not going to find store variants in back issue bins, anyways. I guess so. That's kind of irrelevant, but. I, I like the cover of Haha ha better, and I guess it, when it comes down to the guts of it, there is horror comics. Does anybody know? Because I haven't read any of them. Um, are, are they reoccurring stories, is or or is it like Haha, ha, where it's like this is it, and the next story is a different story altogether? Does horror comics like lead on? Like, do you have to read three or four issues? I I believe there are other horror comic. Uh, one shots and and issues because I, I believe in 2019 i ordered a few i could be mistaken but i'm pretty sure it's anarchic that put it out there yeah that, golden, I, some golden age homages i'm going haha -ha too final answer I, I i i think i like the cover better to me it'd be a cover by I, without reading the inside I, I can't imagine that these would be first appearance type of grabs anyways um, so it'd be a pure cover buy for me. <laughs> okay. So, um, I actually own a copy of horror comics. Uh, I do too. That, I know. Yeah. I know that, you. and, uh, I tried to buy copies of the ha ha and couldn't because the website crashed and then they all sold <laughs> out on eBay. And even though every single person on tales from the flip side has stacks of these books, which they give away on their programs, I don't fucking <laughs> have one. So, uh, and I'm not in a hangout with Drew. Uh, I've never met the man, but I uh, really would like to. He seems to be very fucking smart about comics. Um, I was told by a different uh, retailer who does retail variants that uh, he heard whispers of an ice cream man uh, character that appears in horror comics before Ice Cream Man. And um, I was supposed to, like, get ass and figure out what the fuck was on there. Um, but it slipped my mind and added to the long list of failings that I have. 
my recollection was that he said that was issue two, not issue one. Um, but again, it's been, you know, weeks. Uh, it was actually when the Ha Ha book initially hit the number one that we had this sort of like quick conversation. Um, but I'm going to have to investigate that. At the price point, um, only because uh, I know nothing well i mean it's just i know so little about horror comics and um it seems like there's a hell of a fan base for haha -ha. i'll take it a hundred bucks i don't know if i'm prejudiced by the fact that i own a copy of that horror comics i think still uh i certainly did have you know one or more copies i may have sold them who knows but yeah that's my answer and here's the next book so we have Edge of the Spider-Verse, number two, second print at a 9.8 that went for $314. And then a first print of Edge of the Spider-Verse, 9.4, around the same price. Ooh. So I'll chime in on this book. That second print's got about 5,000 out there, something in that neighborhood. It's, it's Unless we're going to go to the Spider-Gwen Zeros, this is the shortest printed of all of the late printings of um, of this book. So I think that 9.8 second is a pretty good buy, personally, uh, given how rare it is. Nobody's really paying attention to it, um, but I, for, for my money, and I've got a handful of these, I'd be buying that 9.8 really over that uh nine four for, for me is there a um man with a nine four is there any possibility of cracking it out for a possible grade bump are there graders <laughs> notes <laughs> you're right 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 Before maybe i would say this looking at that cover right so the real holy grail of this book is are those black backgrounds mm, right yep and Good. listen, I can't tell shit from shit here, but looking at that one in the middle there, that 9.4, that's a really dark background from what I can see. So that could be feeding into that price a little bit, potentially. There's a lot more bids on that one, too. So perhaps it is the black. 37 bids versus 17 bids on the... Yeah, no, it's, def it's definitely all black. It's a dark background for sure. So that changes the equation a little bit. Those black backgrounds are effectively for lack of a better term sort of the the newsstand equivalent of uf4 so that changes it for a little bit but those second prints are slept on um there's five thousand ish of them out there i would be grabbing those second prints you know the black background changes my thinking a little bit but regardless i i still think uh 314 bucks for a nine eight and that second print is a steal. Being, I mean, I, you guys might have heard me before. I mean, you guys know, maybe you don't, how I feel about late printings long term. I, I don't feel one way or the other. I, I, I'm just kind of just wait and see mode. Ben brings up great points, you know, supply and demand. I mean, there's just not that many out there of the second print. But for me, I don't own a copy of Edge of Spider-Verse number two. I first thinking I would take right away without even thinking the nine four of the first print, just so I could say I have a first print copy of of you know uh, the first Spider Gwen. Uh, but now digging deeper into it and what I know about the market and investing in speculation, I most definitely would be going for the nine eight second print, especially the fact, just like Ben said, I can confirm that, that based on the data that I have had access to, there are less copies of that, that printing than any other printing. And, uh, you know, down the line, if late printing stick, that book could absolutely become a monster and $314 for a nine eight seems like a damn good bargain. So I take the second. Yeah, I mean, listen. I think I, I think the late printing is it staying? Is it going? Thing is is past. They're staying, and you know, people will chase those firsts. Once they have those firsts, they're gonna go chase what's the rarest. And yeah, I think that, that, right. I think that's why that book's gonna explode. So I think that's a steal. Yeah, I, I think people want the the rainbow, right? Because once you get the 
first print in nine eight, then you want the second print in nine eight, and then the third print in nine eight, and you know that that's just sort of the collector mentality. So, yeah, my my pick here is is the nine eight uh, second print. Uh, I mean, nine eights rule rule the roost. Uh, they they just right. do no matter how hot the book. I mean, I've had, I mean, I've had, um, uh, you know, Adam uh, Blue Marvel just, you know, got hot again um, just the past week or two. And, you know, I had a nine for that. And I mean, it just sat forever. Now, maybe I was asking too much, but probably, um, you know, in retrospect with the past week or two, I probably wasn't. Um, but yeah, I mean, when, when, when even hot books take dips like blue marvel did until recently um you know people you know stay stay away from the nine sixes the nine fours they're, they're just less desirable um unless the book is is on a tear so and and then i also think about the collector mentality that goes yeah i want this I want all the prints and I want them all in nine, eight. So, and, uh, and scarcity also rules the day. And for that, those collectors that want all the prints in nine, eight, um, they have to have this book, this second print in nine, eight, the completionists. So that's my call. I'll take the black background all fucking day. Uh, I think the rest of you guys are out of your goddamn minds. <laughs> Yeah. But for the record, I'm not sure that it's necessarily a black background. I'd need to look at the photos. A lot of times people fuck around with uh, and try to make them look like they have black backgrounds uh, when they're not. Uh, not. A lot of times, they're fucking half the, most of the time, people are trying to make it look like back, black backgrounds. I mean, yeah. They, so they, they, they screw with their, like, you got to be real careful with contrast, that. Contrast, yeah. Yeah. Like real, real careful. If it's the bottom book which sold for about the same price and again i'm not real familiar with these auctions so you know i don't know uh, um i didn't look at like the pictures i tried to find them and then i just sort of gave up then it's the second print all day but uh the other like big takeaway is if i did get lucky and could score the you know printing error variant whatever the hell you want to call it book that's not yet recognized but one day will be recognized by cgc I'd break that fucking case open in a heartbeat uh, and when I was going to sell the book and sell that puppy raw. Um, yeah. I have, you know what I mean? It does not make sense to me to sell books like that are nine fours. Yeah. Not high end ratios, you know, not whatever. I, I just feel like I get more money out of them raw. It's not always like that, but when it's like, you know, a real rare book like uh, the Vengeance of Moon Knight, uh, you know, variant, for example, like uh, the Lost 23 variant. I mean, you name it. Uh, it's 9-8 or I sell them raw. I think uh, people get a deal, frankly, on graded copies of those uh, super uh, rare books that are not 9-8s. And I'm not trying to give uh, anybody a deal. I'm trying to get deals. Yeah, it's kind of like the the false hope syndrome. Like you give somebody like me false hope, like oh, perhaps I can press that that raw book there. I don't see anything wrong with it. But let me let me let me take a crack at it and see what I can do. But you're absolutely right. I, I, not only have I done it when I've tried to sell something, but I've done it when I've tried to buy something. I, I still think in this though, I, 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 even if it's not a black ground, I'll, I'll take the nine four if, if 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 I can look at the book. Obviously, like, I can't see really any detail i mean if it, if, if the, the reason why it's a nine four is because it's some dirty dirtiness in the white or something like that i'm not trying to manipulate the game any i mean I, not make it so black and white but if it was damage that was not pressable then obviously i'd go for the nine eight second but I, i'm also from the the cut of the jib where I, I, not always second prints do i do i jump on i i, I do like later printing sometimes but i think down the line people we're going to want the first print, whether it's a nine, eight or not farther down the years down the line. I mean, I'm not buying this book at $330 to flip it in a week. Um, you're going to want to sit on it for a while. I don't think she's reached her peak yet. Unless you want to talk about the land variant and that's out of my price range. Um, 
So me too, buddy. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I figured there'd be more gamblers in here to you know crack it and press it. See, yeah, so. but I, was, I wasn't trying to go that route. I mean, yeah, absolutely. That that would be the way to go. Whether it's a black black nine four or the or the not black white nine four, either one. Because uh, I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not, I guess I'm not hip to the market. What what is a nine eight? Uh, the first print go for right now is that a? It's over a thousand. In the black background, it may be double that, man. Like the black background commands a hefty premium. Right, but let's take that out of play. What just, is it? A thousand dollar book with a yeah, nine hundred thousand dollars, roughly in yeah, that range. Yeah. Something. Good lord, we got like All five right. of them sitting in a box. It, That's like a nine hundred thousand. Yeah. All right, so I have Wonder Woman two hundred four. Uh, first appearance of Nubia Ching Death, and then um, you have Wonder Woman Annual Number Four, which is uh, first appearance of Yara Yara Fuller. This one is easy. Yeah, I'm going with Wonder Woman 204, uh, just because Wonder Woman Annual. There, it, it, this book is brand new. There, there are just copies. You're you're swimming in copies. Okay, I'm swimming in copies. Um, they're everywhere. I like, for especially for eighty dollars. I love Wonder Woman, two hundred four. Um, uh, Nico, you like it? Yes. Brooke, you don't even have. You, you don't even like have, you don't even have you, to fucking you ask like me. You like it, Ben? You like it, Rich? You like it? No yeah. worries. Carter, I'll add another reason. Um, so DC announced this week that there is going to be a comic. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be digital or not. I uh -huh. suspect it's going to be digital, but Nubia and the Amazons. Ooh, hello. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Spice, spicy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Nice. Even better. Even right. better. Anyone want to add anything else? Wish I would have won that auction for 80 bucks. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, there. I mean, it, like he was saying about Wonder Woman Annual Four, but um, for Yara Floor, I mean, there's a a better appearance. You know, it's uh, right. what is it? The the Death Metal Seven? Is that what it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You know, she, and and then um, that one in one hundred uh, Capullo, where it's black and white. I mean, that uh, to me, that's her book. I mean, that's the book. So, and then I think there's even a, a second print or what have you, if I'm not mistaken. But long story short, yeah, I mean, if we're talking about Yara Flora, I'd rather have that Capullo 1 in 100 than this book. And then for me, I will take this all day, every day, and on Sunday, uh, Wonder Woman 204. Can I ask you guys a question? Would anyone's analysis be changed at all if the uh, Yara Floor TV show gets picked up by HBO now that it's been canceled by the CW. I mean, not maybe a little, it. but I'm not sure this is the book for her, right? I mean, there's right. a few other books that maybe are the better play. Exactly. So I'm not, I'm not so sure. Yeah, uh, it, it would move the, it, I mean, yeah, ditto, ditto what Ben said. It, yeah, definitely. It moves the needle, but probably still not enough. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I don't know that it's the book. Even even cover A, I mean, it, you know, but like I said, I think Capullo, the Capullo 1 in 100 for the death metal book is the book for her. That's just my opinion. All right. I'll move on to the next book. So you have. Uh, you want to start, yeah. Steve? Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll go. I am going to go with the Teen Titans Go number 23. Wow. Um. You know, the Batman 357 been recognized as a key. You know, it's it's had its uh, it's had its moments, mm -hmm. but it you know it, it, I, it it's just in a in, it's in a lull. I don't know the next catalyst for it to go to the next level. Whereas, and and you know, Batman, I don't know if there's been any real lull i'll say lulls in the series where you know you have batman books that are you know have print runs under twenty thousand. but teen titans go number 23 i can't imagine that i don't know what the comicron numbers are 
but I'd be surprised if it was over 20,000. It seems hard to come by. It, it also doesn't help that Batman 357 doesn't have, um, uh, J right. This is what Jason Todd and, uh, killer Croc. Killer right? Croc. Yeah. Right. And, and neither one is on the cover. I, and I've heard other people make that, that observation. Um, whereas you do have red X on the cover here. And yes, yeah, some people may say red X, you know, is a, a Johnny come lately. Everyone's all excited because it, you have the recency, uh, factor that, you know, and that, but, um, you know, and it, is he here to stay? I, I it's something about me. I mean, even, even just having watched the old Titan Titans go cartoons, I, I think it resonates across a lot of different age groups. Um, and I, I think because it took, you know, this was a 2003 book. It's 2021. It took 18 years for it to be recognized. <laughs> and have some significance it's going to be tough to find uh nine sixes much less nine eights so yeah I, i'll i'll go i'll go with teen titans go number 23 all the way hey, this is a tough one because i'm not a dc guy at all i'm gonna go with the teen titans go uh book um that said red x in this run if i'm not mistaken ended up being a robot Right, so there wasn't really right. he wasn't really anybody at the end of the day. So the idea of Red X shows up um, in the cartoon. If I recall, my kids love it. It was Robin, I believe, who was Red X, and I don't think it's going to be either one of those characters in the current DC run. Regardless, I do think this is the book between these two. I would have bought this one over the other one personally. So that that's where I'm putting my money. I remember uh, Rocket Raccoon took damn near twenty years for uh, for him to catch on. So, hey, better late than never. Um, Teen Titans Go number twenty three. I like this book. Was, I wish I had. Uh, like I watched you find a copy. That's true. You you watched me find two copies. Oh, you watched me find two. <laughs> but uh, that, hey, that's that's neither here nor there but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, man i like this book and and here's the thing like it like animated versions of characters and like these animated these kids books you know much like batman adventures 12 this has the potential and, and since people know about it now this book is snowballing you know what i mean so uh, if if dc plays its cards right they have a they have a star. They have a star on their hands. Absolutely, I 100% agree. I mean, you guys all know where my money and my mind is of uh, Balfam and uh, Red X with mm -hmm. the, uh, Batman 96, one and 25 Jimenez, and I showed you all the reasons why in, in the Hangouts. But um, for this particular topic. Yes, I think that's a perfect analysis by Ben and Carter. It's Teen Titans Go 23. And just like what Carter said, right now, just like with like Ben has said many times before over the year, over the last year, year or so with Punchline, they have something here. Like they have with Punchline. They better, you know, like a snowball effect. This could be a Batman Adventures 12, uh, you know maybe not as high, possibly even more. I don't know, but they have something here. I take Teen Titans Go 23, and I think that is a low price. Not to mention the newsstand. I, I saw a sale for the newsstand about a month ago for like, you know, a little bit less than that. That thing must be super hard to find because I've never seen it. I've seen it one time on eBay. Mm -hmm. But yes, $270 and 96. And yeah, I will... I will be, uh, you know, when the 96 arrives from my house or I buy it at an LCS or what have you, I will be uh, looking at that closely to see if I can crack and uh, get a crunch corner out or flagging or, or maybe there's a there's some flaring there. But if not, um, and there's a color break or what have you, I'll keep it a 96 and I'll be happy because I'll be expecting that thing uh, to, you know, double, triple, quadruple my money. So there you go. Teen Titans go. Number 23, first Red X. Plus the reveals a robot's huge too. So 
good analysis, Rich. I, I mean, you were so persuasive. I don't even own a copy, but now I'm like ready to like go look for one. <laughs> go look for one and pay a premium. <laughs> yep, I'll, I'll go. I mean, I'll take the Teen Titans Go 23 uh, for a couple reasons. I've got multiple copies of Batman 357. I know that's not the point, but at the price point, you, what everybody said so far, it's a kid's book. These things got read. Uh, a nine six copy? Are you shitting me? Mm -hmm. uh, and there's right. like there's activities all in the uh, within the oh, pages. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So right. yeah, yeah. And I come across Batman three fifty sevens all the time. It's why I have a lot. Uh, it's why I have a stack of them. I I I've been looking for T Titans Go twenty three for a, a couple years. Actually, since Carter got his first one a while back, because I watch Carter's videos all the time, <laughs> but I can't find it. I can't find it. And like I said, I'm sure if I did find one, it would be wrecked and I'd still buy it. But right, it, it's just not out there. Batman 357 to me is a lot more common and it's a 9 4. Get out of here. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. I it's guess the old it. label premium. I guess if it's it, unanimous. I hate to say that. I, I mean, I, I'm a. Uh, as traditional a Batman fan as they come, but like Jason Todd's unlikable. I mean, DC fandom literally voted to have his head beat in with a crowbar. I called the number when I was a kid. I called the number. I, I Jessup is a very nice man. Every time Jessup and I spend some time together, he's like, George, I love you. You're a good man. Go, go about your business. He's he's like uh, he's like the nicest, most decent human person I've ever met in my entire life. He <laughs> fucking tried to kill Jason Todd with a crowbar. <laughs> he contributed to it. So uh, yeah, it's hard to get behind the character under those circumstances. I tried to get a stack of copies of uh, Teen Titans Go number twenty three. Uh, ordered them, paid for them, get refunded my money. They sent me one copy, and I'm happy to have one. If I can add, isn't there uh, an argument that that's not really Killer Croc's first appearance? Isn't there a little Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And he's on the cover of the other. Yes. Correct? And there's a really cool uh, Jason Todd book that has the Joker on it where he takes over as Robin, which I think is, to me, a preferred book because it has such a better cover. But that's neither here nor there. People like first appearances. They don't like that other stuff. So I, I'm a minority opinion on that issue, but I like that Joker cover. All right. So that was the last book. And then uh, Steve, I think you have some news for us about return abilities. So in short, um, Diamond made an announcement, I believe it was earlier this week, that uh, uh, publishers who offered two variant covers basically give up the right uh, to offer returnability. If if the a publisher has two or less variant covers, they can still offer returnability. Uh, one of the frequently quoted metrics for this decision was that for issues that had more than two variant covers, the return the returns were four to five times more than if there were two or fewer covers. Um, so basically, this was an edict from Diamond to the re uh, to the uh, publishers, and there was some discussion during the comics, the annual Comics Pro conference that took place this week, and you know, publishers were asking retailers, "Well, which would you rather have? Would you rather have returnability, or would you rather have?" three or four, or five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 variants. The unanimous answer from the retailer perspective is they want returnability. So I think what we're going to see is, you know, th this puts a lot more risk uh, back on the publishers and also puts more risk on the retailers if they really want to go for it on a, a variant. So the last mm. hurrah of this ability to order a lot of copies and, and get the ratio variants, the last hurrah is probably going to be Berserker wow. uh, coming out from Boom. It's uh, It just got in under the wire. I haven't really thought through all the scenarios and all the uh, effects 
that this is going to ha have. I know someone at Comics Pro brought up, well, are blank variants going to count? And you know, I think the answer is yes. So could we see less blank variants? Yes. Overall, I haven't really, like I said, thought out all the different scenarios, but you know, I think we're going to see, you know, uh, less less variants out there, and it, it's going to be riskier for retailers to sort of overreach in order to get the ratio of variants they have. But I'm really interested in hearing what so, the rest of the rest of you think that may have put more thought into it than than I. <laughs> so, 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 Steve, when I heard you talk about this, a couple of yep. things popped to mind, right? I think this hurts the speculator or the collector because, you know, if there are fewer variants, right, so there's more of cover A, there's no risk of retailers of over-ordering cover A, there's plenty of them on the shelves, right, the scarcity um, of these issues goes down um, of, of, of any of these books, as, as I'm hearing you describe this. So right. I think this is a win for the retailers, potentially, but a major, major setback for the speculators because you know we we thrive on on variants and low print runs. And if 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 you have returnability, you can overorder it. There's plenty on the shelves, and there's no risk if it's a bust. So from a wearing my speculator hat, you know I don't necessarily like this, but maybe I'm interpreting it the wrong way. But but as you talked about it, that's the first thing that came to my mind is that this. This helps the real retailers and potentially hurts the speculators. Right. And I, I think it also, you know, hurts the publishers, right? Because uh, they uh, can't uh, sort of lure the retailers so easily into ordering, uh, over ordering. You know, I haven't been involved in the returnability aspect, um, you know, the logistics and, you know, costs that go into that for the for the retailers. Yeah, but I, I, I think you're spot on. I feel like it kind of opens the door for more store exclusives. You know mm -hmm. I mean? but it's hard to follow already. I'm not going to follow like a thousand stores that are putting out store variants for whatever title. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Hey, uh, real quick, Steve, since you're a retailer. So how long does a retailer have to, to return? I'm not the typical retailer, so... Yeah, uh, I mean, I the closest thing on the board, I think. I don't know, so I, I've never done it. Oh, okay, so I, I guess what I'm trying to get at is um, maybe you guys can help me. So let's just use a scenario. Say they have, they have 90 days, right? Okay. And, and so going back to Ben's... Yeah, I 100% agree with you, Ben. But I guess the, on the flip side... No pun intended. Well, pun intended. On the other side, play devil's advocate. How many times have a title been ordered? And then a year later, we find out something about a first appearance in that book. And all of a sudden, everybody rushes online or to the LCS is to grab those in the back issue bins. And those could be, let's say it's 90 days to return it. Those could be completely returned and they're not even available. You know, so that's the yeah. that's I guess that's the that's the uh, flip side of, of of Ben's statement, in which I agree with Ben. Ben is a hundred percent right from a speculator's point of view that really it hurts us in the sense. But on the other hand, you know, if they have let's say ninety days to return it, and it ends up being a title that they ordered, let's say forty thousand copies, and on New Comic Book Day throughout the whole country, two three thousand shops. You know, they only sold one or two a shop or maybe, oh, let's say 10 a shop um, or let's just say 25 a shop, uh, you know, over 90 days. And they returned all the rest. That's really all that's going to be in circulation, you know, so that, I mean, it's happened time and time, time again. I mean, recently with the, well, with the Miles Morales clone thing, I was on number, I think, 15 when 17 dropped. It, it, 17 had been out for two weeks. I think 18 was on FOC that week. And then I got to 17 and I hadn't seen anything about any clones. It wasn't on an app or, or at least a platform that I saw. And when I got to 17 and I saw what, you know, assessor was doing. And then I saw the last panels of 17, that, that, that strong last page cameo of the clone 
I mean, we went back and, and, you know, I told a few friends or what have you and, and, and cleaned out the, the back issue or whatever. So long story short, if these books were returned at that point, that availability wouldn't be there. Plus it would hurt back issue bids. You know, I think also, you know, um, well, if there's something's up, killing the children's water, returnable, yeah. right? Every issue. Yeah. yeah. I, I know it's definitely since the pandemic. Um, Every yeah. issue. So every every single one. Some people press them hard and uh, abuse the system. And um, some people are so bad at using time and they don't even understand that uh, they're returnable. Well, you know, as I think about this, though, right? So let's say this whole returnable death of variant thing plays itself out. If store variants continue to exist, I mean, they may end up being the play. I know that they're largely hated, but I've, I've thought for a little while now that there's going to be a big, big opportunity there. Um, so maybe that's where there's a massive opportunity uh, to pick up books. Well, help me. The retail variants, uh, they count, right? If you, have, if you do more than two retail variants, it's a wrap. They're no longer returnable. No, not retailer variants. No, oh, they, okay. they're just talking about ABCD like, covers. Yeah, uh, yeah, ratios and ABCD. A, yeah, I got gotcha. you. So, uh, yeah, I mean, like the store I was at today in Pittsburgh, a uh, super cool guy, um, loves something killing the children. He's the one that told me about this. How the hell would I know? I'm not a, a retailer, right? And uh, he didn't tell me today, but he's told me, you know, over the previous weeks that. Oh, well, these books are returnable. I really like the series. I personally collect it. I think people pay too much for it. Um, you know, but I order the hell out of it. I wonder what that's going to do to the spread uh, for that book. Because, you know, usually there's an A cover, a B cover, and a ratio. And then they get into late printings. Um, you, so it's more than two and you're out? Right. That's correct. So there's so going to be an A cover and a ratio or an A right. and a B, right? but not what something killing the children has done traditionally, which is three. Right. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Now this is, you know, uh, I did hear from some publishers that they're trying to work with diamond to see if there's any, I guess, any way to, you know, sort of meet in the middle or anything like that, but uh, not really sure. You know, Ben and Aaron made great points about store variants. And one thing I can tell you coming out of this conference is store variants are here to stay. Every every publisher was talking about variants, the ones they had to order. Even DC surprised me with their list of books that coming up that were either available for retailer variants or what they call uh, team variants. So, yeah, I mean, every single publisher, you know, it, I mean, and, and it's, it surprises me because I don't know how many of you remember this, but Eric Stevenson, who was, who's the publisher of image, he did a keynote speech. I want to say like five years ago, um, at a major con and it was about sort of the evils of variants. And if you remember for a while, image didn't have variants. It was, it was just, one cover um, yep. and you know now you know images you know like you know hey let us know if you want to do a retailer variant for any well matter of fact i, I believe they just lowered the uh, minimum number that retailers have to uh order uh in order to do a retailer variant so yeah we have two 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 opposite ends of the spectrum happening where uh, the publisher variants um look like they're you know, go, going to wane, uh, but store variants uh, are, are definitely gaining steam in terms of uh, availability uh, across publishers. Fascinating stuff. Hey, Quentin, before we move on, do retailers have the option, like order two or just order one variant? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, retailers can, uh, you know, as long as they qualify, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, for the variant, and a lot of times there is no qualifier, right? I mean, like uh, companies like IDW and Boom have always had a cover A and a cover B for just about every title, so uh, non non ratio. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, it's just a, a matter of preference. Like when I went, you know, big for me recently when I ordered 60 copies of High Republic number one, and there were three regular covers for that, right? There was the regular cover and then the Hans and then the, um, I forget the other one, but I ordered 20 of each, but I could have ordered, you know, 40, 10, 10. I could have, mm. so, um, and then obviously I ordered the six of the one in tens and two of the one in 25s because I qualified for that. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm just going to touch on uh, something that's killing the children real quick for issue 16. That's delayed until May. And what they're doing is they're doing at least four covers, a cover A, a cover B, a one in 25 and a one in 50. Such a great series. And if you really, the more you read it and the more you just realize without spoiling it for everybody, this show, I mean, even though it's like, uh, you know, a, make believe or or uh, whatever science fiction or whatever you want to label it comic book so to speak comic book world i mean to do it on tv i mean it's it's pretty brutal it's it's brutal you know i can't wait i love this i i can't wait till it adapts to television series or movie yeah, so this is this is kind of my fault that uh we're here talking about it at, at midnight um <laughs> I, so i won't uh I won't belabor the exhausted, um, but we were having a really fascinating discussion before we started to record uh, about this series. Um, I, I finally broke down and, and read volume one and two in trade paperback. That's the first 10 issues. And uh, it was exceptional. And I was uh, immediately uh, ribbing Aaron like, damn you, damn you, and all of you that were right, I should have been buying these books forever. Uh, you know, my, my best friend, John's been a big, uh, big supporter of this series. Uh, it, it's just, uh, it's really well written and kind of a captivating story. We've been talking about it kind of uh, privately amongst ourselves, like, how in the hell do we have this series where, you know, random issues are 50 bucks, a hundred bucks, 200 bucks. These variants are selling for uh, just crazy money, late printings for crazy money. And people can't seem to get enough. That I mean, does it's, it's happen. The biggest indie series without a TV show ever, I think. And that, and that's not to knock saga who, I think all of us love right that 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 book right. is amazing, but this might be the biggest indie series so far that is not has a concrete property. We all know it's coming, but there's been nothing announced yet. So yeah, kudos to Ross Ritchie, and yeah, you know, I, I don't know I, about the numbers. I mean, uh, certainly there may be some indie series that uh, only has 14 issues out that sold more copies, uh, but the secondary market has never seen an independent that's had so many sort of breakout books. Uh, that's unprecedented. Uh, I mean, it's like, I mean, look, the comic market as we sit here today is unprecedented, but uh, this is particularly uh, astonishing for an independent. So um, we've been talking about it privately. I thought that uh, it just made sense to kind of share those conversations with other people. Um, Steve's observation which is what I thought was the most stoic, sober, objective uh, <laughs> take period of anybody who's talked about this book. Sounds like me before I read the first two trades <laughs> uh, is, I think you guys are all out of your fucking mind. Uh, of course I'm equivocating. He doesn't talk like that. He's a gentleman. Uh, this is that independence. There's one book that's ever worth any money. It's the number one unless there's a number one variant, uh, even the walking dead, those other issues, they've all come down and that's got 12 issues in, uh, or I'm sorry, 12 seasons under its belt. Now, again, I'm uh, embellishing and equivocating on a lot of that, but I think the, the basic point was uh, hold your horses. And, uh, my fear is I'm, I've, I've moved from the, uh, the sober, objective <laughs> camp where I like to be because that's where I'm good. Like that's how I make money buying and selling comics 
to the uh, got any of them something's killing the children variants, man. I'm looking for some later printings. <laughs> Like Dave Chappelle. Yeah, I mean, I still wouldn't pass up, you know, one, you know, you know, any of the rare variants or number one if it, you know, came across, you know, for a couple bucks. But I, it's just, I, I, I feel like it's overheated at at, at current values, and I, I, I do worry about irrational exuberance, but. You know, hey, I'm a I, I'm a party pooper. What what can I say? <laughs> but every day, like it's a new record is broken for like any of those later printings, those incentive variants, like whatever you have. But doesn't that sound irrational? <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, you know, I I liked how they built up the story too. You know, it's not like when issue one came out, there was fifty store variants and a, like a one in a thousand or anything like that. There was just like what three open to order covers and then a couple convention exclusives and then maybe like a store right yeah and just so, so folks no I'm, I'm not operating in fact i have read it i just i you know and it's it's good but uh, you know I, i'm just not you, you didn't turn into like comic book crackhead like hey man you gotta yeah, I'm, not, I'm not wearing <laughs> that, that 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 children variants man yeah and i'm not wearing me a late it, printing. yeah right exactly yeah Cause it did it to me. I'm telling you, I, I read them. Um, I read the trade paperbacks and I was like, I'm sitting here scheming on how I can get some of these ridiculously priced books. I mean, they're just ridiculously priced. Yeah. Hey, if your buy-in was cover price, then let the good times roll. Woo! That's right. And I, I sure. get while the getting's good. That would be my advice, but I know I'm that that's just my opinion. I'm going to let it ride. All right. Let's see what happens. All right. Well, I, I can, I can, um, I wouldn't say it steps to something and it's killing the children, but I would say once in future is actually a, a, a really good title. That is, um, they came out real close to each other, to be honest with you. But, uh, you know, I think, um, I think that one eventually once something is killing the children snowballs down the line, I think that one could be, uh, the next stepping stone that people could look towards to be something not similar, but like, I guess you could say, uh, something's killing the children light or what have you. And that's out right now. A lot of variants, a lot of late printings. It's low print run. It's a great story. It's beautiful art, um, virgin covers. And that's, uh, uh, once in future. So yeah, I would check that one out too. Hey, you know, what sucks is when you're looking for something that's killing the children, and you see Sombra <laughs> every time. <laughs> and it's from Boom. And then you see that SOM. You're like, oh, it's in the, like there's none in the back issue bins. All it is is just Sombra and some <laughs> other bullshit like afterwards. Uh, Aaron, are you going to show us what you got? Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh, okay. Yep. So I bought the uh, original art from Peach Momoko. Lord the, of mercy. Yeah, the, something is killing the children. Number thirteen, I believe. So yeah, really? so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well done. yeah. So her um, OA is better than her cover. Yeah. So like that's gorgeous. Yeah. I so I mean, it. It was, yeah, <laughs> I was. It's my first original art piece to uh, purchase. I mean, I've gotten like uh, sketches on sketch covers and all that, but yeah, first OA piece. Nice. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did pretty good on picking out something. Well Dick, done, right? sir. Uh, ben, I think you were uh, uh, also in the uh, OA game. Oh yeah, completely unrelated. <laughs> Nobody cares, but you know. No, no, we all Love care. Gwenpool, near and dear to my heart. So this was Modok Head Games, the last page of number two. I was speaking with Scott Hepburn. He's like, oh, you want to buy it? And I'm like, uh, I think I do. So I bought it. Why not? Beautiful. It's yeah. heavy. Brilliant. So uh, explain to everybody what your theory is and how we can now, uh, like most of your theories, prove that you were right. Uh, um, I, think, I think Aaron has the demonstrative evidence. So I've been talking with Jordan Blum on Twitter about Boom. Gwenpool. Uh, 
like, is she showing up in the Modoc TV show, right? And so I came on to ask him, and this is what he replies. One day, I'll be able to talk about Gwenpool being on our show. Today is not that day. I don't know if this is saying that she's going to be there or not, but, like, this is close enough to, like, a sign that, you know, maybe, maybe we see her, right? He did talk about early on when I first started pestering him how Marvel, when he started writing the show, um, Marvel gave him a stack of Gwenpool books to go through. So I feel like she's showing up in this um, one way or another. Um, we'll see. I don't know what that does to her books, um, but it's certainly a step forward for the character if she does show up. So I love Gwenpool, and I'm saying I think she's showing up in MODOK, but we'll wait, have to wait and see. I don't think that like this... This series that they put out, this four issue series with Gwenpool being featured, is a mistake. Like I think they're setting the table for us. We'll have to wait and see. How the fuck could she not be in the show? He literally confirmed that she was going to be in the show. You found the tweet. You <laughs> called the shot like Babe Ruth. I don't know, man. You're like <laughs> you like you pointed. My arm's not long enough or too long or something. You called the <laughs> shot. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. glum tweet. Uh, it's a wrap, right? Uh, you can read this two different ways, but yeah, you I can't think read that up. two different ways. You're like Aaron, you're just humble too, <laughs> surrounded by humility. It doesn't work for my inflated ego. Uh, you guys are killing it. I, I, uh, I truly uh, am just astonished by your buys. Good stuff, guys. Uh, it's after midnight on the east coast. I thought we killed Steve, but he's back to say okay. goodbye to everyone. And uh, I'm sorry for rushing us to the end, but it's been fun. We'll be back next week with more.